Hey everyone, and welcome back to the galaxy. Today, we will be learning how to use the text tool in GIMP. The text tool allows you to create and edit text in your project. First, I will select the text tool. Without touching any settings, besides making sure my text is the color black, I will create a text box on my canvas. To create a text box, you can either click once and start typing, or click and drag out a text box and then type. Creating a new text box will create a new layer for your text. You can resize the boundary size of the text layer by clicking and dragging any of the sides or corners of the text box. Let's look at some ways we can customize our text. Changes made here in the main tool options affect the entire active text box. To make sure a text box is active, simply click inside it. Clicking this text icon will reveal more font options that we can choose from. Directly below that, we can change the size of our text. You can use these small arrows to finitely adjust the size or type a number. I will cover the Use Editor option later on in this video. Anti-aliasing keeps the edges of your text smooth. If we zoom in, we can see this a little better. This is with anti-aliasing on, and this is with it off. Look at all these rough edges. Hinting can make small text more legible. I often find medium gets the job done, but a higher amount will produce an even clearer effect. Since we're zoomed into this text, we can notice subtle changes that occur as I cycle through these options. Directly below hinting, we can change the color of our text by clicking this box and selecting a color. Moving further down, we have justify options. These control how the text are positioned within a text box. This is best demonstrated with text that has a text box bigger than its characters. Left and right justified. Align the text to the left or rightmost border of the text box. Centered will center the text in the middle of the text box horizontally. And filled is best demonstrated if I keep typing with this option selected. Notice how as the text moves to another line, the previous line stretched slightly to touch both the left and right border evenly. Beneath the justified options, we can define the spacing for the indentation of the first text line, which is only visible when you have more than one line of text. We can also define the spacing between lines of text as well as the space or kerning before each of the individual letters. Finally, we can define how the text box behaves. Fixed will be visible if you have drawn out the text box or edited the boundaries of it. Dynamic will be visible if you have clicked once on your canvas with the text tool and started typing. This option will automatically switch as you edit the boundary size of your text box. It is helpful for confining the text box to the text in one click. Right now this text box is fixed since I made it bigger than the text. I can choose dynamic from this dropdown and it will immediately snap to the text. Under language, we can define what language our text is. I haven't found this to make a huge difference, but if you're having text rendering problems in your language, changing this to the corresponding language may be beneficial. So far, we have gone over the tool options that change the entire text. If you'll notice, there is an extra options box that appears right above our text. 
This is used for editing single layers and words. To do this, you first want to highlight the letters or words you want to edit by clicking and dragging in the text box. A yellow square will appear around all letters selected. Then, from this menu, we can customize. There are even some extra options available here. We can change the weight and formatting of the font with these icons. You can use them to bold, italicize, underline, and strike through text. Finally, let's look at the capabilities of the pop-out editor, available when we tick Use Editor in the main tool options. Here we have almost identical options to the editor placed above our text box. But there are some extra options here at the top, which may be hard to see with the dark theme I'm using. From left to right, and from right to left, determine the starting point of the text and how it will type. From left to right, starts from the left and types to the right. While from right to left, starts from the right and types to the left. Finally, we have two extra options for each orientation. Vertical mixed orientation. We'll flip words along the vertical plane while vertical upright orientation will again flip words along the vertical plane, but still retains the natural orientation of each letter. See how these two options differ. The options for right to left orientation mirror those for the left to right orientation, which I just demonstrated. And that's it. You've now mastered the text tool. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing for more awesome content. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful by liking this video and leaving us a comment. Thanks for watching.